Right, just talk amongst yourselves a minute while I get ready. <laughs> So as is customary with me, what I would like you to do is tell the person next to you just how blessed they are. against tithing. 
I often times I would suggest if you look at the person who's writing those things, look at their background and you'll see they probably don't belong to a church, they're low in ranges. So do be aware of that. But today I don't really want to talk about money as such. Because if I say tithing, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Joy. Money. Yeah? Am I alone in this? But you see, tithing has nothing to do with money. Tithing has to do with your heart. The reason that was established was praying to take you from a point of, I won't say greed, but worldly thinking, to a place of kingdom mindedness. You see, the world teaches us if you want to get more, just keep and keep ordering, keep adding on to it. The kingdom says, if you want more, give it away. Because I can tell you and I promise you, you will never outgive God. You will never outgive God. So a lot of the reasons against it are um, our tidings in the Old Testament. So I'm going to ask you a little experiment here. Those of you that have physical Bibles, would you mind holding them up to me? Okay. Uh, with you, yeah, just grab it out. Perfect. I'm going to actually keep it, keep it in the air. Thank you. Can I say for those two young ladies at the back there? You know, you know why I love that? It's because you're not the first. Moses, as far as I'm concerned, had the Word of God on that tablet. So that's it. Yes. <laughs> Keep your Bibles up. Let me keep your Bibles up because I'm going to ask you to do that. Now I want you to go all to Matthew 1, please. <laughs> go on, Matthew 1. Tell me when you're all there, put your hands up. If, um, yeah? Everybody on Matthew 1. Those of you that are looking for the tablets, this won't work. Can I have one? Can I have a Bible for a second? Are you all on Matthew 1? Yeah. Right. Go to the page to the left of Matthew 1 and hold it up. Sorry. <laughs> I want the page between the page to the left of Matthew 1. Hold it up like that. Page not applicable. <laughs> <laughs> that page is what divides what man has put in between Old Testament and New Testament. And I want you to know, as far as God is concerned, this is the Word of God. Amen. Not the Old Testament, it's not the New Testament. That little page that divides the old from the new is what we put in. So when you say tithing is in the Old Testament, Okay? Is it in the Word of God? Yeah. Ooh. Let me give you for instance. You can have a back. Let's see how lively you guys are this morning. I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures and tell me if you want to amen, yam, shout, hallelujah, scream, stand up, and you know, do whatever you like. Right? Ready? <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Right, here we go. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Amen. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Amen. Okay. But he was fierce, pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was shook so we could be healed. Amen. Amen. Take the light of the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. You're very quiet at. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings of eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. 
So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I will pour out my water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run into it and are saved. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Exodus, I am the Lord who heals you. So if people in, um, in the media, the social media say tithing is on testament, so are those promises. How can you hold on to the promises? In the Old Testament, and then say, "But I won't tithe." If if you really want to hold on to the Lord, you've got to remember: there's no Old and New Testament. There's the Word of God. Do you think that if you don't tithe, God is not going to bless you? Or do you think if you do tithe, He's going to He's going to bless you more? You see. Does the Lord say? Just using some of these. Does the Lord say? Um, I'm not going to heal you because it's Old Testament. <laughs> Does the Lord say, I'm not going to bless you, I'm not going to guide you, I'm not going to comfort you because well, that's Old Testament. Does the Lord say, I'm not going to strengthen you? No. You see, God is faithful. He's always faithful. Sometimes people say, but yes, but that's under the law. And we are not under the law. It's all right, sir. We love children in this church. Mm -hmm. A little bit of gravy. No, 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 no. People say, but tithing is under the law, and we're not under the law. Yeah, we're not under the law for salvation. But when we say we're not under the law, does it mean we're above the law? Let's change things a little bit through the that way. We're not. We're not. Luke 16, if I can have that up, 11 and 12. If therefore, reading from the King James, you have not been faithful in the unrighteous manner, that is money. Who will commit? To your true trust, the true riches. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? You see, the tithe is holy. The law says it's holy, it's sanctified, it's set apart. It's exactly the same as the first the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It was holy, it was sanctified, it was set apart. It wasn't for us to grab hold of. So when we're actually not giving in our time and taking that 10% for ourselves, then this comes into play and it says, if you haven't been faithful, which is another man's, can you, is it scriptural? Can you put that one back up here? Uh, uh, nope, that's not it. Luke. Luke 16, 12. Luke 16, 12. Right? Okay. And if you have not been faithful in what is another man, who will give you what is your own? Now I'm going to say this to you. Read me that. When it says another man, put God. If you have not been faithful in what is God's, who will give you what is your own? Now you've gone quiet. Now you've gone quiet. There's a particular verse that I was going to call Dermot to come up, and I'm going to experiment. Dermot, can I try my Hebrew on you today? Yeah? You know Shema? 
Ja? Können wir das schon mal? Shema. Deuteronomy 6, 4 und 5. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. The Lord your God, the Lord is one. And then he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. We know the verse? Mm -hmm. Let me give you what it means in the Hebrew. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. And the word soul is actually mind. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind. And the word strength is the word medecha. And medecha actually means hold on, money, possessions, and the ability to earn. That changes a little bit. So you are to love the Lord your God with your heart, with your mind, and with your treasures. There were three things, if you recall, the last time I was up here, I asked you to give. Do you remember what they were? Three T's. Oh, what a transfer of plastic. Time, treasure and talent. Talents, treasure and treasure. treasure. Remember? Yeah. Time, talents, and treasure. And those are the things that you get. And there are people who have a little bit more treasure, so they can give more treasure. People who have more time, they give more time. But the key is to ask the Holy Spirit, where do you want me to serve? Where do you want me to serve? How do you want me to serve? Do you want me to serve in my time, in my talents? Do you want me to serve my treasure? That all has to do with one thing. Because the heart of the problem is the problem with the heart. As it progresses. Let's do a little experiment. We're going to need a few volunteers. No, oh, I can see some of you already shaking. This one's easy. This is an easy one. I'm only going to have one person. John? Yeah. Thanks for volunteering. Good man. I'm glad I'm standing up here. <laughs> so, did we not say that the time is the Lord's, yeah. Yeah. and if you say it's holy, yeah. and it's sanctified, yeah. and it belongs to God. Yeah. So let me show you a little experiment here, a little illustration. Uh. <laughs> I think you look like a good Yiddish boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, John, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to hold this bar of uh, pick it, pick it up. Yeah, go on. <coughs> Open your hands. There you go. Now, what I'd like you to do, John, in your best estimation, because I'm told you're an engineer at heart, is to give me 10%. Well, you would think it's a tenth of that pick it. That is holy. Mm. That has been set apart. Mm. And this is the piece that actually sanctifies and is sanctified. But because you give this to God, what God does for you is He sanctifies the 90. His protection is now over the 90. You can do far more with your 90 and, and God than you can with 100% of your own. I wasn't going to use Malachi, I just think for a second. I had this argument with Bernie because I told her that, you know, Malachi was written by Mexican. <laughs> yeah? No. Well, you're going to come on seriously. Him and his brother, Malachi and Mariachi. But she wouldn't have it. So go to Malachi. Yeah. And Malachi then says, can you have Malachi 11 for me? Malachi 11 says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. In other words, when you tithe, God's on your side. 
and he will rebuke the devourer. It's almost like, in essence, this is almost like an insurance policy. So why did he not do it? Do you know that in the last study, I don't know the latest figures, but I think about five years ago, it's something like only 2% of the church tithe. There was less than a done that if the church tithe, the church would eradicate world hunger in two years. But because you tithe, you give to God what is God's, He has got your back. What happens if you don't tithe? The covering is gone. Understood? Yeah. Moving on? Yeah. Yeah. Let me get you to start again then. Good man, you get to keep it. Don't you need to go back and then you ask the boss? No. <laughs> Malachi 3.10, I, if you want, the, the key verse to tithing is Malachi, okay, the, the key little passage, and I, I would say, look, Malachi 3, go and read it on your own, it starts off in Malachi 3, and, and by saying, the Lord says, I am, and I am God, I am God, and I do not change. So if he hasn't changed his mind on salvation, if he hasn't changed his mind on keeping you and guiding you and saving you, he hasn't changed his mind on tithing. But I wasn't going to use that, and I want to use just one back verse. In verse 10, you got it up there? Yeah. 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 3.10. All right. 3.10 says, Give all the times into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Okay? And then he goes on and says, And try me in the oven. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say give. What is, my Bible says bring. Yeah. What does your Bible say? You can only give something if it belongs to you. Mm. Yeah. You can't give. Right? The Lord isn't telling you to give the tithe. It's the difference between understanding ownership and stewardship. And we are stewards. We are stewards down here. The 100% actually belongs to God. And He says, keep going to God. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. But yet, we fail to do that. Let me do another little, little illustration, and then maybe this will really settle. Um, I'm going to ask for a few more volunteers, and I was hoping that Roz and Liz would be um, up here for a... Uh, yeah, come on. But maybe I've got a pan. Pan, you're just sitting there as well. All right, now, keep your spacings. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, cut in the center. Right, we are great. Now, ladies, I'm going to ask you a favor, okay? I am actually going to be going away. I'm going to be going for a little while. I don't know how long I'm going to be away. I need you to look after Bernie for me. Okay? Is that a deal? Yeah. You need more women. I was expecting this from the last time, not from you. Here's the deal. Would each one of you give Bernie 100 euros every month? Okay? Yeah. yeah. Alright? I'll make it even easier. I'll give you a thousand every month. I just want you to give her a hundred. Can we do that? Yeah. Okay? Graham, yeah. that sounds great. So, here's what happens. Three months from now, I ring up Bernie. Hey, honey, how's it going? Yeah, it's good. Um, how are the girls holding up? Yeah, no, the girls are great. The girls are great. Um, are, they, uh, are they helping you? Actually, I've got to tell you, Liz is outstanding. Liz, on the first of the month, without fail, brings me a hundred euros. Wow. Well, that's great. Thank you. That's great. Um, what about Pam? Um, you won't believe Pam. I mean, <laughs> Pam, she doesn't always make it on the first of the month, but, but Pam actually brings me two hundred euros. 
every month. Wow, that's tremendous. Oh, this is just getting better and better. So obviously, Roz is doing very well. Ooh, we've got to pray about Roz. <laughs> um, what's the matter? What's, what's going on? Well, the first one, Roz brought 70 euros. The second one, Roz only brought 50 euros. And this is almost the end of the third month, and he still hasn't brought anything. Now, you see, you, you really just had one job. You really, all I was asking you to do was, while I was away, was to look after my bride. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Are you getting it? Yeah. 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 You see, that's what the Lord's asking us. The Lord's asking us to look after His bride. That's why it's coming into the storehouse. Because as the money goes into the storehouse, the storehouse can actually use. And you don't always get blessed. You know, the, the, the big mistake is people think, well, if I put 100 euros in, I'm, I'm going to get 110 back. Mm. You, you get blessed in any other way. And I'll come to that in a second. But I'm going to give you a process of your faith and your heart. Okay? Ros, would you stand up in front of me, on this side of me? On that side. Pam, would you move up a little? Yeah, a little bit more. That's a little bit more. This. A bit more. Okay. And now we need another go and go. Who can we use? Rita, you're sitting very quietly. Come on. Now, all I'm trying to do is bring this across to you as an illustration. I really want you to be like the good Berean churches. And I want you to go back and study the scriptures for yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. Okay? This, folks, is the process of a Christian walk. Okay? Now remember, Pam was doing twice as much. She was giving 20%. Liz was giving 10. Ross was tottering in there. Okay? And Rita has come to the Lord, so she hasn't actually yet started to give. Right? What does this actually depict? It depicts a walk of faith. That's what it is. Because when you're here, all of these have actually been baptized. Every single one. The only difference is that these two, when they were baptized, they kept the water out of the water. <laughs> But you want to keep it dry, you know what I mean? But, so, Rita hasn't actually got to the point where she has enough faith in the Lord to trust Him with her finances. Ross understands the concept, okay, knows she's got to give, and maybe it's not, maybe it's faith, maybe it's heart. Because one of the last things to be converted. Is, is actually your pocket. Liz, on the other hand, is tremendous because she's already walking in that place of actually trusting God fully with her time. But God doesn't stop here. Okay? Jesus didn't stop by having one nail put into him. He stopped when it was his life and every drop of blood was given for him. And that's when he wants to take us. He doesn't want your money. He doesn't need your money. He wants your heart to be like Jesus. Amen. That's when we need to go. And tithing is a step to break the hold of greed upon our lives. To break that worldly thinking of how we think, we, you know, to do things. Because the world's telling us all about it. You know? If you do anything and the first thing they ask you is, what's in it for me? And I'm not going to sing. Why? Because the first thing you want to know is, how, what do I get out of it? And so many people actually tithe in the wrong sense. I heard a Spanish pastor talking about a guy who came to him and absolutely let rip into him. And he said, you promised me in Malachi that God said that he would bless me in my time. And I tithed last month and I had seen nothing. And you think a whole life of not tithing and God's going to just in one month actually honor you? 
Don't you think it's a process? It's a process. God, really, all He wants to do is to make you Christ-like. And everything that He does is to make you every day a little bit more like Jesus. So that at the end, everybody that you meet, everybody that you come across, everyone that you speak to, whether it's at work or whatever it is, will look at you and say, I see Jesus in you. But if you're tied first step with your hand in your pocket, that's the first thing the world sees. Because that's how the world is. So, ladies, thank you for your contribution. Nobody will expect the ladies here to love you. You didn't count. You didn't count it. God doesn't pay you back in Malachi when he says, I will bless you in this. He doesn't bless you only in the financial. He blesses you in health. He blesses you spiritually. He blesses you with gifts. He blesses you with uh, friendships, with family. He blesses you with great pastors. I was expecting a better, better response. <laughs> Actually, can, you, can the two of you stand yeah. up, please? No, please, seriously. I, I really believe in, in a culture of honor. Would you please stand? I want to honor you. But I want to tell you why. We've been in the church for 24 years. Next year, I believe I'm getting a gold watch for long service. In the 20, uh, you, you should have got yours this year. You didn't get it, I'll speak to the pastor. <laughs> In the 25, 24 years that we've been here, I have always known the ark to be a tithing church. Okay? So, whatever you have tithed, and you sometimes think, I really wish I could do more for missionaries, I could do more for Israel, I could do more for feeding the homeless. Let me tell you, when you tithe, you are. Because that's how the money is administered. But I want to honor you because we, we have always tithed, but under your leadership, the church is now meeting 20%. And I honor that for you. Thank you. So like that bread loaf, you remember John broke off the first piece? That's first fruits. God doesn't want the leftovers. Okay? He wants what's first. And I know a lot of people have questions about it, and a lot of people will come back and say, well, what about this, what about that, what about that? Look, don't get legalistic. Just follow your heart. Just follow your heart. I had envisioned actually doing this talk today, this teaching in a slightly different way, but I felt I needed to bring these two illustrations because they will really just sit you and, and remind you for the rest of your life. But I'm going to call up Roger today. So Roger, come on up for the interview. Can I have the mic for Roger? Thank you. Thank you. It's a, have a seat, Roger. You have a seat, I'll have a tea. So, I've tried to choose uh, people who, in a sense, I think, can actually give you testimony. Because at the end of the day, it's by the word of your testimony and the power of the Holy Spirit that you are able to overcome. And sometimes all you actually have to overcome is that little mindset that's stopping you. It's stopping you giving because of the fear that you won't have enough at the end of the month. So Roger, I want you to give us your testimony and uh, tell us how you were blessed. Well, uh, Anne and I, for those who know us, will we'll confirm that we are very, very blessed. We just are. Uh, don't want to seem smug, but we're blessed, right? But I, I want to tell you a story that goes back to the first time I was blessed, really consciously blessed by the Holy Spirit. I was at uh, my church in England. This is when I was a young man of 40. <coughs> Uh, and I was listening to the elderly pastor give a talk from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. 
Uh, Paul was concerned at their reluctance to support an offering for the persecuted church in Jerusalem. To motivate the Corinthians, Paul used the example of a rival church in Macedonia who were giving sacrificially in spite of being poor. The, the man who was speaking told us that there were two Greek words for poor. Penes and tochos. Penes was having just enough, but tochos was being destitute. The Macedonians were tochos. They had nothing. Yet, little as they had, they gave generously and joyfully. At this point, the speaker stopped and the church had a huge pulpit like the prow of a ship. He leant over this pulpit and he looked at us all and said, I'm not talking about money, folks. I'm talking about releasing Christians. You, you was Indian, of course. Um, <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry, Scottish. <laughs> well, the accent was okay. <laughs> That's probably my first conscious Holy Spirit experience. It was like an arrow striking my heart. And, praise God, I was delivered of any concern about money which took me right up to present day. So, it's all his anyway. And that's and my attitude towards money. It belongs to him, and we do what he tells us to do with it. And we are very, very blessed. <laughs> The next person I'd like to call up is Gurney. Please tell the truth, I know your husband. <laughs> the whole truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> so I'll be fine. Oh. <laughs> okay. Franz was uh, asked me just to share a bit our, about our personal testimony and really about the attitude of our hearts and it goes back to when we first came to the Lord. Uh, when we were, when we first came into the kingdom and gave our lives to the Lord, we were actually struggling really, really badly financially. Um, we'd been struggling for quite a while. And uh, we owned a restaurant with my parents in Malaga. But the restaurant wasn't doing exceedingly well. It, um, it got by, just paying the bills, but we, we really struggled. We had no extra just had enough to live on really and uh, one of the most important days of the business really the day that actually paid for everything was a Sunday because it was the day that people went out to eat and so that was the day we'd make a little bit extra and that would keep us covered for the week and then through the month on, on all the Sundays and when we came to the Lord with all our financial struggles and all the other stuff we came into the kingdom of after a time, God said to us as a family that he wanted to test our hearts and he was asking us to close the restaurant on a Sunday. And the reason he told us that is he knew as young Christians, in order to grow in our faith, we needed to be in church on a Sunday, we needed to hear his word for us on a Sunday, we needed to be with other Christians who were like-minded, who you know, had the, the mind of Christ and thought like Christ and to be able to worship together. So the Lord was testing us, were we prepared to really take a step of faith and do what he asked us to do because he knew that in order for us to grow spiritually, that's what we needed to do. So after praying together and really in a bit of trepidation, we said, well, if God is asking us to do this, we have to trust him. We don't know what's going to happen, but we have to start learning to trust God. So we did, we closed the restaurant on Sundays and of course the rest of the week just wasn't enough to keep it going. 
but there were other things God was speaking to our heart. And he said, now you are going to be really struggling because now we wouldn't even be able to pay our mortgage and the bills. And he said, but I want you to keep tithing. And that was another struggle. First, we didn't really understand the concept of tithing, but we asked Christians, and one man said to us what Fon said this morning. He told us this, and this is where we learned it from. He said, God owns 100% of what you have, and he gives you 100%. He gives it to you. But he says to you, give me back 10, because he wants to see if you will give him what actually belongs to him, and then you can use the other 90 for everything you need it for. So we continued to tithe through the struggles and what have you. And there was another thing that happened, because God does things according to what he knows needs adjusting in our lives. And as his says, it's not only about finances, it's about what's going on in your life and your heart, and maybe the mindsets you've grown up with. Well, throughout our lives, as we were, we were struggling financially, even as my family was, my brothers, sisters, my parents, always struggling financially. My mom always used to say, we'll never have enough. We will always be poor. We always struggle. She always said that because every time money came in, something would happen, we'd be left with very little. So one day, when my parents also came to the Lord, we were sitting in the lounge and we'd been praying about the finances because we were really struggling. You know, they were working in the, in the restaurant with us. It wasn't making enough because we weren't opening on Sundays. And we just started praying together. And we felt that God was telling us that through words spoken by my mom, mom continuously, not aware, she was just stating the facts. We had a curse on us because we'd actually been believing the fact that we would never have enough. And she'd been believing it. Suddenly the penny dropped and she just broke down. She repented before God for saying that and repented of all the words she'd spoken over all of us and herself and our whole family. And she just really came before God and asked God for forgiveness. And then we actually felt that we needed to cast out the spirit of poverty from our family because it had been come in through a door, which was just speaking negative, negative over those years. So at that instant, we cast out the spirit of poverty from the family and we just that's it, we worship God and we just felt, uh, you know, something must have happened and I trusted God for it. And the, the progress that happened in that month, at the end of the month we wouldn't have been able to pay our, our mortgage. That month, Fonz got a job. He'd been looking for a job for years here in Spain and hadn't got, he's a civil engineer originally. He'd been looking and he hadn't got it. Just that month, when all these three things had been put into place, he got this job, we had paid it well, we had enough to pay our next mortgage. In fact, from then on, because we thought that would be the first month, we thought, how long will the bank allow us to stay in this house before they take it away? We thought maybe three months, whatever. Well, that was the first month we wouldn't have been able to pay the mortgage. He got a job, we never skipped one mortgage payment. And what I can honestly say that happened from these three things in our lives is that our lives have turned around completely. Now, it wasn't just what maybe just the timing, it was actually the attitude of our hearts and other things that God showed us need to be changing in our lives. He wanted us to be obedient to him. And it was just a question of heart attitude and obedience. And once he got that through to us, he's turned our lives around. Our lives are nothing compared to what that was in those times. My parents, their lives changed completely. God provided for them. They never struggled again. And uh, it is just, and it's not to say, you know, the legalistic side, it has to be 10%. No, if God says that 10% belongs to him, give it to him. Thereafter, if he wants you to bless others or give to others or give to something else, it's all his anyway. But be obedient to what he calls you to do because he's just waiting to see if you'll do what he tells you. And it won't be the same for everybody because we each have different lives. We each have different things going on in our lives. So God knows what he wants to check you with or test you with about your heart and about your attitude. But definitely the tithe is his. Don't even touch it. It belongs to him. Make sure you give it to him at the beginning of every income that you have. And the thing about the Old Testament, you know, people say, and I've heard it said, but it wasn't mentioned in the New Testament. Okay, let, now Francis demonstrated why. Because this, it's one book. But... Jesus actually mentioned tithing. 
He mentioned it twice, but I just want to tell you about the one time because this time basically explains it all, which is why he never needed to repeat it again. He was talking to the Pharisees and to the Jews, and the people were standing around him, and he said this phrase, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. Nobody questioned him what belonged to God. Well, let's go back to Caesar. First of all, they knew, pay your taxes. Whatever you have to pay, do it, because you've got to be legal with the law. The second part, give to God what belongs to God. Nobody said, okay, but what belongs to God? Because everybody there, including the Pharisees and the Jews and everyone else that was with them, knew what belonged to God. They'd been taught all their lives and throughout all the word of this of God that what belonged to God was 10%. So Jesus was telling us, and that shows to you, it actually is in the New Testament. He says, give to God what belongs to God. So when somebody says it's not New Testament, Christians and living. Jesus said it. Give to God what belongs to God. Okay. So you've seen I stand up here for 25 minutes and say something. <laughs> Bernie comes up at 10. Welcome to my world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for going. So Deuteronomy 8 18 says, It is He, talking about the Lord, who gives you power to get wealth. That He may establish His covenant, which He swore to your fathers as it is this day. In other words, the time is to establish the covenant. The time is for you to actually, as you give it, it changes your heart. People can see how you have changed. It opens up a, a heart of generosity. And that's really you really want to go. And people say, well, why do you keep on tithing? Let me give you an explanation. Um, have you ever been to a restaurant and, or you, you've sat at maybe somewhere at a meal somewhere and they put a, a really nice dessert, chocolate for the ladies, if you wish. Yeah. yeah? Put your hand up so I can see. Oh, not many of you. Okay? Now, you imagine this. You take your spoon, you tuck into that dessert, and you try it, and you go, mmm. <laughs> and the first thing you think is, honey, you've got to try this. And you push it over to your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, yeah? yeah. Am I the only one in this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Have a little bit of life here. Right? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Right. That's why I'm tired, that's why I teach on time. Okay, that's why the church leadership believes on teaching and tithing. Because it's when you taste and know that the Lord is good, you will see. We have received so much from God in, in our process of obedience that we want everybody else to be blessed and receive in the same way. Amen. So let's stand and pray. You know, when you go home today, John's the only one that's going home with a prize of the baguette today. <laughs> and you sit down for your meal and you've got a baguette, right? Please do the exercise. Break off a 10%. Right? And then look at that baguette. And it puts things into perspective. Mm. And you see how little God is asking of you. Mm. So Father, we want to pray, Lord, this morning. Would you be with us, Lord? Bless us, protect us, keep us. I pray, Father, that you speak to our hearts, that you've opened our hearts to receive your word, Father. I pray that each and every person here will seek you, Father, in a great and mighty way, that we will be able to step from not giving, Father, to giving more, Father, to going the extra mile, to giving twice as much, Father. I pray for that help in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Do you all know about giving, going the extra mile, yeah? You can certainly do it. The problem, the problem with Christians is that for many Christians, going the extra mile is the only time they do this when they miss the turn from the highway. Please don't be like that. Amen.
think, again, um, we all...